What's up, everybody? This is Eric Johnson with Think Well Coffee, and I'm here to roast some coffee with you guys. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, we have, um, in this roasting series, we're approaching, we're doing multiple batches, and our focus is all about the environment and how we're controlling the environment to be able to do uh, very different roast profiles, um, all while um, you know, not harming the beans by thinking about that environment and what are we doing and how are we changing it. So flame, airflow, the time that we do those things, where do we do them in relation to different phases in the roast? And we're taking into consideration where are we trying to end at? What are we trying to do and accomplish for the beans in the cup? How much mass do we have of coffee inside of this roaster? Because that drastically changes it. Um, now, this what we're gonna do here is an Ethiopia dry process. So dry process is also the same as saying natural process. Um, dry process coffees are where the farmer harvests the fruit and instead of breaking off the skin and the fruit mucilage and getting down to the seed and putting those in a big water tank, that's the wash process, the, the farmer harvests the cherries, lays them out in the sun, rotates them and lets them dry with the fruit on. When that happens, there's this all this, you know, fruit, coffee fruit character from the cherries that gets imparted to the seeds that are inside of this cherry. And it ends up with this really wild, fermenty, whiny, kind of complex, juicy character. Um, now, when you roast dry processed coffees, it can be super tricky, okay? So you, you gotta approach them differently. There's, how I see it is there's two there's two things that are happening when you're roasting, two elements that I'm, that I'm um, factoring in. I'm changing the environment to try to balance these two elements. And one is just the bean itself. What does that bean taste like? What's its character? How, how hard is it? You know, how dense is it? How soft is it? Is it um, have a ton of acidity in itself or does it have nuttiness? Is it has a bigger body? What is that like, okay? And the other factor is this natural, the dry process, these like fermented notes that are put on top. So now I've got this bean that has its own interior taste and then I have this flavor, this, this dry process flavor that's wrapped over the top of it. Now, this specific bean, but is, it's pretty applicable to naturals is to stretch, you know, it it benefits from really stretching out the roasts, okay? So I will end up roasting this one a little bit longer than I would typically do for this size batch, and I'm stretching out the phases. That is not totally typical of a different roast profile with a bean that has totally different attributes. So um, I'm one time I roasted a natural, and I had been working on this natural and working on trying these different profiles, and I just kind of was like, you know what, I'm going to stretch this thing out so far that I'm uncomfortable with how far. So I had the yellowing, you know, the Maillard reaction, the yellowing phase. I stretched that, that, the brown phase, I stretched that phase out for like six minutes, which is like, you know, stupid. Don't do that. And then I stretched out the development phase for like four minutes or even longer. And I thought... Well, now I found the edge, I found that boundary, I found where like, you don't want to go beyond that. And so I can kind of pull back with different profiles. Well, I drank that one and it was mind blowing. Like I could not understand what just happened. Why did that make this the best natural that I ever had? And, it, and then it, it had, this is why I approach it where the, we have our bean that we're developing its flavor and how we're roasting that. And then we have this flavor and compound that's thrown on top, which is, so that's the, that's my like kind of approach to naturals. So we've got this Ethiopia. It's a dry process. I've got three and a half pounds. I'm gonna apply heat, get that environment going, stretch it out through the Maillard reaction right when it begins browning and I stretch it out. Then I'm gonna increase the heat again, but not too close to first crack. I'm gonna do it before we approach first crack so I can pull back the heat again and stretch it out. So it's kind of this tricky double push. Um, so let's try it, okay? I'm gonna begin this batch at 300 and 
68 for the bean temp. And here we go. I'm increasing the heat. So now, like I said, I am, I'm gonna get this thing going and to push this thing in order to be able to stretch it out. I don't want the roast to go on for super long, which means that I want to get this thing up into the browning phase. I want to get the Maillard reaction to begin fairly quickly so that I can stretch it out and not feel pressed for the roast going too long. Now, I'm going to pull back. I'm going to, I'm going to land about 9.2 inches of flame on this one. I'm looking at my, my time and temps here. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to wait till around a minute and then I'm going to push it up to the 10 inches. It's, it's kind of just kind of not going to push it all the way right away as hard as I can. I want to watch and wait for this turnaround, which looks like I would be surprised if we get into the 350s at all. Okay. Yeah. It's turning around already. So because I'm seeing this turnaround, I'm knowing I've got enough heat on this. I'm just going to let it be. Now I'm going to watch my bean temperature here and wait for that to, to turn around. When does it turn around? How quickly does it turn around? Once it turns around, how fastly is that time increasing? Those are all things that you really want to have in your head and think about. And then you're thinking about those details with the fact that there's 3.5 pounds of, in here, not 4.5. And how does this application of heat affect where we're trying to get to? So all that being said, we're approaching two minutes. We have, we're now increasing on both of our temperatures, okay? And I'm actually going to right now begin just slightly pulling back my, I don't want to like fry these things out with too much heat. So I'm going to pull it back to about 8.5. Yep. 8.5. And I'm going to wait and watch now and see how the temperature is reflecting where I'm wanting it to go. I'm, I'm going to watch the beans. I'm going to wait for them to change for open up, kind of liven up. And then I'm going to just begin to slow. I want them to get up there and I don't want them to slowly get there. I want them to get right up to that May reaction. And then I want to like, let them sit, chill out. And then we're going to push them again. So I'm looking at this thing. It's 245 minutes, 278 bean temp, 378. So we're hundred degrees apart between the two thermocouples in this environment. And it's under three minutes that we've done that. We're pushing pretty hard, which is great. I'm beginning to see the beans are beginning to, to open up. They're beginning to change and liven up here. So. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up the air right now. All right, which is different from my other rows. So I'm going to open up my air now. So now I'm creating the, the space in the drum for me to be able to make the movements that I want to make with my flame setting. So the mayor reaction is like, we're well, right on the cusp. It has sort of begun. There's these, it, this is probably a line that I would say people really struggle with knowing. When is it the browning phase? When is it the mayor reaction? What's this second phase? When has it begun? I mean, it's pretty, it, it's not as objective as first crack. Super clear, super objective. You're hearing the cracks. And even that can be tricky because how many cracks constitutes, like when is it actually happening versus what you're hearing? Here, I'm seeing chaff in the drum. Here, I'm seeing the tone is now changing to lighter and it's gonna begin taking on these orange colors. So. We're at four minutes, 20 seconds. I am now pulling back. I'm gonna pull back my flame to, I don't know, I think I might go around four inches. We'll see here. I'm like, okay, 435, 300, 403, and I'm gonna go down. This is a pretty, okay, I'm gonna keep going down. It'll let me go. I think it's, so because I have 3.5 pounds of mass in here, I can go, I can go down further on the flame because less flame 
is required to get this drum with this amount of mass in it heated up. Keeping that in mind. Now, I'm gonna watch my environmental temperature and know when do I need to make these flame adjustments in order to, I, I'm not trying to kill progress, but I am trying to really slow down um, the environment from, um, from like pushing really, really hard and really fast. I'm just like wanting it to ease up. So I've done that. I'm seeing we're at 525, we're at 316 for our bean, 410 for our environment. We got lots of chaff going on in here. Like it's, it's, we are in fully in the Mayar reaction. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back the flame even more. Okay. I'm going to try to stretch this out. I'm going back. I'm at like 0.2. Okay. I did that at 550. And now I'm going to just let it sit here for a second because then I'm going to give it a pretty big push. Now there's this window, this chunk of time before first crack happens. So my machine, first crack happens in like say 370, 372. I would say from like 355 to 372, I don't actually want to push the beans that hard right there. That's like a, a, a you know, it's like the, the beans are in like a fragile state. And so if you hit them really hard with heat right there, I don't think that it benefits them. I'm sure there are profiles in beans that that could benefit. I don't like to do that. I'm not gonna do it here. So here we go. I'm at 330 for the beans and I'm, and I'm lowering my environmental temp is dropping. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push these things right now. The, we're at the end of the, of the browning phase or at the end of the Mayar reaction uh, of the phase, not the reaction. And I'm gonna push these things. I think I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go up. Keep going. They're gonna take on a lot of heat. All right, I'm going to nine. All right, so seven minutes, I put on nine inches of flame. And now we're gonna watch what the environmental temperature is gonna do. We're gonna watch what the bean temperature is doing. And we're gonna think about how long are we making this push for? Okay, we're going up by two tenths on the environment, two tenths, three tenths on the bean, okay. So here we go, 7.30. Now this is the game plan. I'm gonna push this until we get in that zone, that 355 and above, where I, I don't wanna be hitting these things with heat right there. I, I'm not trying to do that. So we're gonna make this, I'm gonna just start pulling it back now, 7.50. 350, 416, and I'm gonna pull this thing back. So here's what's tricky, okay, is I'm approaching that space where I don't want a lot of heat, so I gotta get my flame down, but I don't wanna stop the environment increasing. So I gotta find this space where I'm, I am not negatively affecting them by too much heat, but I am keeping heat on them so the environmental temperature continues to increase. So we're gonna keep going, keep, keep going, dropping, dropping, dropping. And I think we're gonna land high twos here. So let's see. Nope, low, we're gonna go right about here feels right, 2.4. Okay, so it's 8.30, so we did that whole thing for about a minute and a half. We pushed the beans. We've got some good movement on our, our bean temperature probe and now we're just gonna watch and see what happens okay so i heard the first couple snaps let's see how these things are all right so nine minutes 70 904 904 first crack 370 371 okay and they, I can just, I'm now hearing it. It's like fully 918, 374, first crack. We got increase in, so you're gonna let that environmental temp just continue to increase because I don't think I'm pushing it too hard. And what we're gonna find is as I open up our airflow here, that environmental temp is gonna start to go down. So I'm just slowly opening, I'm listening to the airflow. I'm listening to the first cracks, I'm watching my temperature, and I'm just like, I'm letting this all synthesize. I'm gonna make some sense here. So we've been roasting, 
in our development, in our final stage here, we've been roasting for about a minute, a little under 40 seconds to a minute. We're doing good. I'm going to pull back my, we're pulling back the flame, 0.6 inches of flame, okay? We're going to try to stretch this puppy out. All right, so lots of cracking going on in there. These things are really moving. I'm going to open up. I'll let them develop as much as I can. I want there to be these beans to be fully developed. They're not looking for the bean itself to be sour. I got enough sour and complex fruit flavors coming from the dry process. I want to get this bean to be fully developed, super sweet, so it complements these complex fruit carriers. So now I can see it's starting to take on these notes color-wise that I'm liking. Okay, 400 degrees, 11 minutes. So we were able to get this to sit for two minutes and um, in development. So it was developing for two minutes. We got up to 400 degrees. We had stretched out. Now, you know, you compare that two minutes we've had, you, you know, mini roaster for two minutes in the development phase. That's not uh, anything crazy. It wasn't like I did um, like a four or a five minute development like I was talking about with the other dry process batch that really opened my eyes in terms of how to roast it. But the principle of what we just did is the same. And that's that we're making a push, we're stretching out the Mayo reaction. We're making another push that's shorter and pretty steep. And then we're trying to just, even with that push just happening, um, affecting the environment so it really can stretch out how long the development goes for. A lot of times, if you make that push in the Mayo reaction between 330 and 350, you make a push like that, you're gonna get much higher in your roast temperature or a much shorter development time. And that was, I didn't want that. I wanted two minutes of development and I, did, I wanted to stay, um, I mean, 400 is perfect. Sometimes I get up to 402, sometimes it down at 396, but um, this is what we're going for. So cool, that is dry process Ethiopia and another profile that's worth trying. So, all right, thanks for watching guys.